please welcome Olivia Chow. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you. Great. Welcome. Oh, Miss Olivia. How are you? How are you? Very well. Good. Have good. You, good. Have, you, have, you, have you been? Good. Busy times. Mm, not particularly. No. I finished a book, that's why. When did you start the book? Oh, sometime last year, eh, May, June. May, June. May. What, why the timing of that? Um, after Jack passed away, um, people kept asking me, how did, you, how did you manage, how are you doing, saw you, and I realized that I read some other books, Witherow's book, that really helped me. So I started writing stories down, how I felt, and then before long, I got more and more writing done. Right. Um, and HarperCollins said they were interested, so I started writing in May. What did you gain from the process of, of telling the story? And specifically telling the story knowing that people who've lost a partner were the impetus for this? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was really hard <laughs> to write. I thought doing Jack's sculpture, you know, doing capturing his his um, feature yeah. was hard. This one's even harder because I did relive some of that experience to to uh, to connect, reconnect, and, and write it down. But I realized that there was something inside me that made it easier for me to get through that really tough period. And I'm still going through it somewhat. And then I looked back to my background and to my teenage years and realized that, hey, you know, when I was growing up, it was pretty tough then too. Right. So, um, but through the process, I brought some friends together and we had wonderful dinners to recapture all the things we did. That part I really enjoyed so in reliving this. When you look at that girl's face. <laughs> Where did you find that? Right? When you look oh at, my gosh. Yeah. When you look at her face, <laughs> look at that. Ooh. <laughs> no, come on, where, beautiful, beautiful. Where did you find that? We have ways. Yeah, okay. We have, we have okay. Ways. <laughs> what's, what's going on inside that girl's head? Um, that is, I was in high school. Oh, I know, yearbook, okay. Uh, I figured I, I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> so, or so I, you think. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. You didn't pay money for that, did you? Um, uh, uh, I discovered, I became a junior forest ranger when I was 16. I discovered stars. You know, I grew up in St. Jamestown, in, in yeah. downtown Toronto. Never saw stars. I saw the forest, I saw sunrise, sunset, and beautiful lakes, and I thought, wow, this is what Canada's about. And, and it touched somewhere back inside me. And also at the same time, I went to church, so um, got the story about unconditional love. Mm -hmm. So during that period, I was so much into love, the beautiful nature, your, wilderness. Was your home chaotic at the time? I was completely. My dad was beating up my yeah, mom. At that time. At that time, I was trying to separate them. I was trying to keep peace. I was trying to work two part, you know, two jobs and trying to get to school. Uh, make sure I have good marks so I can get into university, you know, right. typical thing. Uh, it was pretty difficult. But, but that faith sustained me, right. that, that appreciation of the universe. This is the same kind of faith that I had to draw on after Jack died. Right. And so it is returning into it, so what, back to it. What role did forgiveness play in your life? Because when you're telling that story about your family, it's something mm -hmm. that you can carry with you or, or manage. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, um... I realized that my dad was sick. He was he had a mental illness. So I, I you know, when I was much younger, I, I didn't understand it. I was just full of rage. Mm -hmm. That didn't last very long. I'm not that kind of person. So, um, and then this whole thing about forgiveness, mercy, and you have to move on. So I made peace and, and it was just really wonderful. I mean, not to go into tangerine, but you mentioned faith. What do you think of the new Pope? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love his focus on dealing with poverty, making life, other people's life better, rather than power and religion, uh, but a sense of coming back to the fundamental of loving your neighbor as yourself. I thought, wow, okay, I, I like that. 2015, will you be running for a federal seat? <laughs> uh, why? I know where you're leading. Yeah, I, I, 
of because I, I heard your introduction. I thought, what was that? Yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm going to talk let, about the mayorship, yeah, of course. Yeah, but but let, let me come to that, okay? Yeah. Right, I've been really upfront. Yes, I am. Been, I've been seriously considering mm -hmm. running for the, being the mayor of the city of Toronto. Uh, I believe that... <laughs> I love the city, and uh, I think we deserve a lot better than Rob Ford. I certainly think that our kids need a better role model. But as to what my role might be, uh, whether I'm going to do it or not, um, once I made the decision, I'll give you a call. Okay. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Can you call me first? <laughs> <laughs> Let's play a hypothetical game. If you were the mayor during the ice storm, Hypo hypothetical. Why well, don't do that? Well, no, only because <laughs> because part of it is understanding how you would deal I, with I big issues. I can talk about the past, which is what the book is exactly. about. Exactly, I'm you talking know? about the past. Okay. It's hypothetical about the past. So <laughs> hypothetical about the past. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, which is technically the past, <laughs> if you were the mayor during the ice storm, would you have called a state of emergency? I, I don't know. I, I don't know that. So it's not as I, I wasn't. I I I didn't. Um, you know, I I don't do hypothetical. One of the key things. Life is sometimes hypothetical. Okay, well, no. One of the key things is this. I I'm going to try to answer it this way. This is how I look at yeah. life. If you always think about, you know, I could think that, oh my God, there's all this time that I can't share with Jack because he's not there anymore in, in the House of Commons, right? To, to, to imagine what I'm missing. But if I look at what I have now, live by the moment, live every moment to the fullest, right? Then the past can become beautiful memories. Amen. I'm with you. Stick around more with Ms. Libby Chat right after this. <laughs> yes, she is an MP for the NDP, but who is Olivia's favorite conservative? We'll find out next. Uh, that's right. According to Stats Canada, I think the number is around 13.3 13, 13 million, maybe, of Canadians who are involved in some form of volunteerism. I know that Governor General David Johnson has the My Giving Moment. Volunteerism is a huge part of that. Mm -hmm. We hear a lot about it. Do you think people fully comprehend how important it is? And, and I it think means? so. I yeah. think so. Um, I was working at Wood Green Community Centre. And I had a huge group of volunteers. So I was on TV saying, more, 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 more people come and volunteer. Lots of fun. That's how I got started. I volunteered for a member of parliament, and I thought, hmm, this is, this is how it's done. Okay, time for anthropology. You ready? Who is your favorite conservative? Favorite? <laughs> oh, I haven't thought about that. You know, maybe at the, at the House of Commons cafeteria, you're sliding your tray, and you bump into this one person, and you go, oh, hey. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, John Bear and I don't agree with each other in most of the things, yeah. and, uh, but I find him not a bad person to work with. So if you want me, yeah, That's I think... That's a good answer. Yeah, John From what Baird. I understand, John Baird knows so much about parliamentary etiquette and rules. He's actually an expert in a way on it. He's a very effective politician because he knows quite a bit about how the system works in Canada. That's true, but and he also heckle very loudly, which is not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> how often in the House of Commons do you heckle? I don't. Never? Do you slam the desk and go, hey, hey. No. Never? Not my style. Do you like, when you see it happening, what do you think? It uh, depends how skilled the heckler are. Sometimes <laughs> they're very funny. <laughs> I, I, others are really boring. Picture this. What are the odds, in your opinion, of Ben Mulrooney, Justin Trudeau, Mike Layton, one day forming a benevolent triumvirate, bringing peace, prosperity, and justice to all <laughs> Canadians? <laughs> Imagine that, the three. 
And they would form a party together and make sure that no child, and, and finally end child poverty. Right, like they all promised to do, that, not those in three. In 1989, right. yes, they did. And, and deal with climate change while they're at it and yeah. build some affordable housing and have good transit. Woo! No, wait, you, no, sorry. <laughs> My journey, Olivia Chow. What a pleasure to see you. Thank you. We'll be right back.